Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share some devotionals with all of you. The first one is titled, 61 Years Late. An amazing fact. In 1946, Robert Probach wrote a prize-winning essay for the Gonzaga University's student paper, when Robert tried to collect the $20 of prize money, the editor told him to come back later. On each succeeding visit, he got the same message, come back later. He never received the prize money. By 2007, the story had become family lore, and Robert's son Greg decided to see what would happen if he contacted the university about the matter. On May 18, 2007, the university president handed Robert a check for $512, $20 plus 61 years of interest. Robert donated the check back to the university. Christians have been expecting the Lord's soon return almost since Jesus' ascension nearly 2,000 years ago. Is the Lord like an unfaithful newspaper editor, promising a reward that will never come? Peter warns his readers that in the last days, scoffers will come saying exactly that. Peter reminds us that God has an eternal perspective on time. With the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. 2 Peter 3, verse 8. The psalmist corroborates this, For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. Psalm 90, verse 4. Peter also reassures us that this apparent delay is not because he's unwilling to keep his promise or has changed his mind. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, verse 9. God is waiting to give out the prize, so that as many people as possible can receive it. In the meantime, perhaps, we can do what Robert Probach did once. He finally received his prize money. Share it with as many people as possible. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will, be, will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Isaiah 30, verse 18. And that's the end of the first devotional. And the next one is titled, Learning to Cry. An amazing fact. Studies shown that women cry 30 to 60 times a year while men cry 6 to 17 times per year. However, there is no difference between genders until adolescence, indicating that emotional tears are a learned response. Another study showed that infants pick up cues about how to cry from their parents' language. French infants tend to wail with a rising pitch, while German infants cry with a falling pitch. After viewing the abominations of the city of Jerusalem, Ezekiel sees six men with weapons come into the temple, one of whom also carries a writer's inkhorn. The Lord instructs this man to put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations in the city. Ezekiel 9, verse 4. He then instructs the other five to follow behind and kill everyone who isn't given the mark. 
This idea that God's people mourn over the sins of others is repeated throughout Scripture. The psalmist records, Rivers of water run down from my eyes because men do not keep your law. Psalm 119, verse 136. Jeremiah, expecting the people, might not turn from their wickedness, said, My soul will keep in secret for your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly and run down with tears because the Lord's flock has been taken captive. Jeremiah 13, verse 17. The reason for these holy tears is twofold. Not only has God's law been violated, but the sinners will soon suffer the consequences. When Jesus wept over Jerusalem, this was his lament. If you had known the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes, for days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you. Luke 19, verses 42 and 43. Jesus was mourning that his people refused to know him and that they would soon suffer the consequences of rejecting him. Ultimately, Jesus wants his followers to learn to make his tears for his people their own. Mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Lamentations 3, verse 48. And the last one I'd like to share with you is titled, Everlasting Love. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. As an earthly shepherd knows his sheep, so does the divine shepherd know his flock that are scattered throughout the world. Ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. Jesus says, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Ezekiel 34, verse 31 and Isaiah 43, verse 1, and 49, verse 16. Jesus knows us individually and is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He knows us all by name. He knows the very house in which we live, the name of each occupant. He has at times given directions to his servants to go to a certain street, in a certain city, to such a house, to find one of his sheep. Every soul is as fully known to Jesus as if he were the only one for whom the Savior died. The distress of every one touches his heart. The cry for aid reaches his ear. He came to draw all men unto himself. He bids them, follow me, and his spirit moves upon their hearts to draw them to come to him. Many refuse to be drawn. Jesus knows who they are. He also knows who gladly hear his call and are ready to come under his pastoral care. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them and they follow me. He cares for each one as if there were not another on the face of the earth. He calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. The eastern shepherd does not drive his sheep. He depends not upon force or fear, but going before he calls on them. They know his voice and obey the call. So does the Savior shepherd with his sheep. The scripture says 
Thou ledest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Through the prophet, Jesus declares, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, have I drawn thee. He compels none to follow him. I drew them, he says, with cords of a man with bands of love. Psalm 77 verse 20, Jeremiah 31 verse 3, and Hosea 11 verse 4. And that is the end of these devotionals. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, answer his call. Call on him today. Ask him into your heart. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. And from then on, relationship. Have a relationship with him and see for yourself just how much you mean to him. You all have a beautiful day and I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.